So I just wanted to show a close-up of the water bottle holder as well as the matching Divine Crochet Hat and the Fingerless Mittens. So there's a separate video tutorial for the Fingerless Mittens as well as the hat. And this video tutorial is going to show you how to make this adorable Crochet Divine Water Bottle Holder. For this crochet project you're going to need your 5mm crochet hook as well as a tapestry needle or darning needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn that I chose is by Premier Yarns Everyday Anti-Pilling. Here is the amount that's included in a skein, 100% anti-pilling acrylic medium 4 style yarn. The color is gray heather. There's a separate video tutorial for the fingerless mittens. They turned out really gorgeous as well as a separate video tutorial for the matching hat. So we're going to start with the magic circle. Just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers. Go ahead and bring up a loop then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then go under the two loops again around the middle fingers, bring up a loop and then complete a single crochet. Then you're going to chain two. One, two. And then that's your first double crochet in the magic circle. So you're going to make a total of 12 double crochet into the magic circle so that first one counts as your first double crochet so you just yarn over go under those two loops bring up a loop you have three loops on the hook yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through two loops you have two loops remaining yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops to complete a double crochet then yarn over go into the magic circle bring up a loop complete another double crochet and you're going to continue making double crochet stitches until you have a total of 12. So, so far I have three. Four. I'll make one more with you and then I'll let you finish on your own. Yarn over, go under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the remaining two to complete a double crochet. So go ahead, finish a total of 12 double crochet in the magic circle and then come back. So now I have a total of 12 double crochet in the magic circle. Take your other hand, the forefinger and thumb, and hold the base of the 12 double crochet. You have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. And then just gently close the center. Don't worry about getting it completely closed. You can always close it more later. Then grab the loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work so that your 12 double crochet form a circle. And then you're going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first double crochet in the magic circle. So you go into the top stitch then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then you have 12 double crochet in a ring and if you have an opening in the center of the magic circle just turn your work over and pull on the loose yarn end and then that closes closes up the center nicely, which is why I love the magic circle because you don't have a gap or opening. Then you can chain three, one, two, three, to move up to the next round. So for the next round, you're going to make two double crochet into the next stitch.
and you're going to make two double crochet into every stitch around until you get back to your first chain three that you made in the round. So two double crochet into every stitch around and then come back. So now I'm back to where I started and I have 23 stitches in the round. So I'm going to make one more double crochet in the same stitch as my initial chain three. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that same stitch as the initial chain three and make a double crochet and that will complete 24 double crochet in the round. And then I can slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made. So right into that top stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on, on the hook. So now we're moving up to the next round. Now if you like this size for your water bottle holder, then you would stop here as far as increases and you won't be making increase rounds like I'm going to be doing. So this next round will be an increase round, which means that you're going to increase the number of stitches in the round. So that means that you're not going to follow along with me for this next round if you don't want to make an increase round. So I want mine, my water bottle holder to be a little bit larger so I'm going to make another increase round. So I'm going to start the round with a chain of three. And this time I'm going to make one double crochet into the next stitch. And then two double crochet into the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to my first chain three. So I'm going to make one double crochet into the next stitch, two double crochet into the next stitch. And then you just keep repeating that pattern all the way around back to your initial chain three. So now I'm I have one stitch remaining. I just finished one double crochet and then two double crochet into the next stitch. So now I'm going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to make one more double crochet into the same stitch as my initial chain three. So now I have 36 stitches in the round and I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made. And now I have the size that I want for my water bottle holder. So for my water bottle holder, I got this one from Dollar Tree for only a dollar and it's really nice. I really like, like it for only a dollar. This container also will work with my dachshund dog, my dachshund dog video tutorial. Some of them have a secret um, compartment for a container. So this one has a little bit smaller opening than the one that I recommended, but it would still work for that purpose. So just to keep that in mind for a container that's only a dollar. And I'm using it as a water bottle holder. And as you can see, it's large enough the increase to the number of stitches, it's large enough for this water bottle container. So now you're ready for your design, the spiral design. So you can go ahead and just chain two, one, two, and then you're going to make a front post double crochet around the double crochet post from the previous round. So you're going to be going right before, in the space before the double crochet from the previous round. You're going to go behind it with your crochet hook and come out in the space on the opposite side of the double crochet. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to go into the space right before the double crochet post from the previous round. 
you're going to go behind the post into this space just after the double crochet post from the previous round. And now you can see that the double crochet post is in front of the crochet hook, which is how it gets its name, front post double crochet. So now you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn behind the post of that double crochet. Now you have three loops on your crochet hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two of the loops, then you have two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops to complete your front post double crochet. So now, in the space, let me use my tapestry needle to show you, so in the space just after your front post double crochet, so here, just after your front post double crochet, in that space, you're going to make three double crochet stitches in the same space. So you yarn over, go into that space from the previous round just after the front post double crochet that you made, bring up a loop, and make a double crochet. So there's one. You're going to make two more double crochet into the same space. And now you're going to skip three double crochet from the previous round. So here's one, here's two, and here's three. And then you're going to make a front post double crochet around that fourth double crochet post from the previous round. So you just yarn over, go into the space just before the fourth double crochet post from the previous round, Go behind the post and out the opposite side. And you can see that the post is in front of your crochet hook. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn behind the post, and then complete your double crochet. And then you would have completed a front post double crochet. So they're that easy, and this is the pattern you're going to repeat all the way around. I'm going to keep repeating it with you. So now, in the space just after the front post double crochet that you made from the previous round, you're going to make three double crochet into that space. Now, you're going to skip three double crochet from the previous round one, two, three, and you're going to go into this space before the fourth double crochet from the previous round. You're going to bring up a loop and make a double crochet. Then you're going to make three double crochet into the space just after the front post double crochet from the previous round. And this is how my work is looking. And you're going to keep repeating this pattern all the way around. I'm going to make one more with you. So I'm going to skip three stitches. I'm going to yarn over first, skip three stitches, and then go around the post of the fourth double crochet. Bring up a loop behind the post and complete a front post double crochet. Then I'm going to make three double crochet into the space just after the front post double crochet. So go ahead, keep repeating that pattern all the way around, and then come back. So now this is how my work looks so far, and I just finished my last set of one front post double crochet and three double crochet. I'm going to skip the last three double crochet, and here you can see, I'm going to show you with my tapestry needle, the chain two behind, and that just helps kind of hide the join. I like that method, so the chain two is back here. You're going to go into the top stitch of the front post double crochet 
that you made. That first front post double crochet stitch that you made for the round is where you're going to make your joining slip stitch. So go ahead, go into that top stitch of the front post double crochet, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch and then you're ready to move up to the next round. So you can go ahead and chain two, one, two, and then you're going to make a front post double crochet. But first, before we do that, let me just give you the count from the previous round. So here was the previous round front post, and there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine front post double crochet stitches, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets of three double crochet from the previous round. So you're going to be making a front post double crochet around the previous rounds front post double crochet. So just yarn over, go behind the front post double crochet, bring up a loop, and complete a front post double crochet. Then, just after the front post double crochet that you just made in that space before the three double crochet from the previous round, you're going to make three double crochet into the same space. So yarn over, go into that space from the previous round, bring up a loop, and complete a double crochet. And then you're going to make three double crochet total in the same space. So here's my second. and my third. Then you're going to make a front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet in the round. And then three double crochet into the space just before the three double crochet from the previous round. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So you should still have the nine front post double crochet stitches and the nine sets of three double crochet in the round and you'll see that the front post double crochet stitches are all lining up with the previous rounds and you should always end the round with your three double crochet stitches and then skipping the three stitches from the previous round. So then you just take and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first front post double crochet that you made in the round. So you just go right to the top stitch of that first front post double crochet stitch and make your slip stitch and then you chain two to start the next round. And you keep repeating the same thing for each round until you have the height that you want for your water bottle holder. And before we continue on, I'm just going to show you how to bury the loose yarn end in the center where the magic circle was. This will be the wrong side of your work. So the inside is the wrong side. Take your tapestry needle, put the loose yarn end onto the tapestry needle, and then just kind of weave through the magic circle. I just go a couple of different directions. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim the loose yarn end. And remember, this is the wrong side. So go ahead and turn it back so it's forming a cup and that you're working on the rounds from the outside. And then you just start each round with a front post double crochet around the front post double crochet from the previous round. And then three double crochet into the space just after the front post double crochet. And you just keep repeating this pattern all the way around until you have the height that you want for your water bottle holder. When you come back, I'll show you 
the height that I had for mine. Make sure I had three there. Then I'm going to skip the three double crochet and then make a front post double crochet. So go ahead, finish making these rounds until you have the height that you want for your water bottle holder. So if you want the same height as mine, I finished a total of 16 rounds. Then, for the last round, you're going to make a V-stitch round. So to start the V-stitch round, you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. That counts as your first double crochet. Then, go ahead and chain one more for a total of four chains. And then make a double crochet into the same stitch. So just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, and complete a double crochet. So this is your first V-stitch, which consists of a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet in the same stitch. Then you're going to skip one stitch and make another V-stitch into the next stitch. So you just yarn over, skip a stitch, go into the next stitch and make a double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet into the same stitch to complete your next V-stitch. Then just skip the next stitch and make a double crochet into the second stitch, chain one, and then double crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to where you started. So this is what mine looks like after I'm finished. And when you reach the beginning, just make a slip stitch into the third chain from the bottom. So here's the first, second, and third. Make a slip stitch into the third or top stitch of the third chain. And then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and then just bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle and put the loose yarn end onto the tapestry needle. And then you want to weave it through the work on the wrong side. So this is the wrong side of the work and I just go in and out just weaving the loose yarn end on the inside. So I'm going to go back across just to make sure it's nice and buried and that it won't come out. Then you can take and trim the loose yarn end. Now we're ready to make the handles. So now on the side of the water bottle holder, I have the right side facing up. And the V-stitch I mainly, mainly used as a decorative portion for the top of the water bottle holder, but you could weave a chain through the holes or a ribbon for a tie if you wanted to uh, make it that way as well. But for this one, I'm just going to fold down the V-stitches and then I'm going to take my crochet hook and at the base of the V-stitch you're going to go ahead and place your crochet hook through the stitch and then bring up a loop with your crochet hook and the same colored yarn. Then you're just going to tie a knot And then you're going to chain two. One, two. And that counts as your first half double crochet for the strap. And then you're going to evenly space your stitches across the base of the V stitches. And I'm going to go behind my loose yarn end. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into the next stitch. At the base of the V-stitch, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a half double crochet. And then you're just going to make 
one half double crochet across until you have the width that you want for your strap. So now I have three and again I'm at the base of the V-stitches. There's four and five. Then you're going to chain two, turn your work, and that first chain two will count as the first half double crochet for the second row of the strap. I'm going to go ahead and trim the loose yarn end that I buried as I crocheted. And then I'm going to make a half double crochet into the next stitch. So yarn over, go into the next stitch and make a half double crochet. So that's your second stitch for the second row. Half double crochet into the next stitch for your third half double crochet. Yarn over, go into the next stitch for the fourth half double crochet. Then yarn over and go into the last stitch for your fifth half double crochet. Then chain two to move up to the next row. Turn your work and repeat. So you're going to keep repeating. Each row should have five stitches or five half double crochets stitches in the row. So that's four. I need one more on the end to complete five half double crochets in the row. And you can see how you're forming a strap. So keep repeating. Chain two. Turn your work. One half double crochet into the next stitch and one half double crochet in every stitch back across for a total stitch count of five stitches in the row. And you keep repeating this until you have the length that you want for your strap and then come back. So I made my strap approximately 24 inches then you can go ahead and finish off when you're finished with your last row. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to sew the other end of the strap in place. So now you want to make sure that your strap doesn't twist. And then you're going to line up the strap on the opposite side. And then once you've lined it up, you want to fold down the V-stitch round. So make sure you fold down the V-stitch round. And then you're just going to line up the bottom of the strap and then go through the wrong side at the base of the V-stitch and go through to the right side. Then you're going to go a stitch over at the base of the V-stitch, go through the bottom of your strap, and then just sew the strap in place at the base of the V-stitch. And then you want to go back up, about a stitch up, at, still at the base of the V-stitches and then sew about a millimeter or two above where you just sewed the bottom of the strap. And that's just to make the strap a little bit more secure. And you don't want to see the stitches on the right side so make sure that your stitches aren't too large. Just about a centimeter or a half centimeter. And then once you're finished sewing the strap in place, on the wrong side you're just going to tie a knot 
So I'm going to tie a knot on the strap. I like to go through twice. Then you can take and bury the loose yarn end. Just go right under the strap. Make sure that you don't go through to the right side. And then I like to go right back through the strap again with the loose yarn end. Make sure it's nice and buried. Then you can trim it. And then you have a nice handle and decorative top for the top of the water bottle holder. And then this is what the water bottle looks like inside of the holder. So now you have a nice carrying case water bottle holder that matches your fingerless mittens as well as your hat.